What's up everyone, Drew and Hunter from Misfit Athletics, and today we are going to clean up your split jerk once and for all. We have three tips that we are going to tackle. We're gonna go over pause work, we're gonna go over practice, how you play, and last but not least, we are going to tackle how you can earn your percentages. The first thing that we are going to go over today is incorporating pause work into every single warm up that you do and also setting aside full dedicated skill sessions for the pause work. So we get two options here that we can either completely separate or actually put into one drill itself. So the first thing Hunter is gonna do is pick up the barbell into the front rack. And I might like what I see here already, but when we are doing a complex movement like the split jerk, we wanna be able to, both as the athlete and the coach, pause him in certain positions to make sure we like what we see and he likes how it feels. So he's gonna go ahead and dip right now. This is going to be the first pause iteration. So as you notice, his elbows did not drop, the barbell did not slide down his chest. We have a nice vertical torso. As the athlete, Hunter's gonna wanna think about whether he has hip tension there. As a coach, how do I establish that? I look and make sure his entire foot is on the ground, big toe and heel are still in contact. We trace out to the knee and back into the hip. That's gonna create the kind of potential energy that makes your body wanna go up into that drive phase. Now, the second thing that we can do is pause in the catch position. So Hunter's gonna go ahead and do a split jerk here. And again, Hunter gets immediate feedback, just like in the pause dip. When he's here, he knows whether he feels balanced, whether he feels overextended. As a coach, I am looking from the side here. I see that he is stacked from his hand to his hip and down to his knee. That's what we're looking to see in this position. So again, you want the immediate feedback as the athlete and I wanna be able to see these positions paused because sometimes when it's really dynamic, it can be super challenging. So in terms of execution, Hunter can decide whether he just wants to do the pause dip, jerk and stand up and be done with it. Or if he goes into the pause catch and then nothing wrong with doing both, right? We pause there to make sure we're good. We pause again in the bottom and then we move on. So tip number two, we have to practice like we play. To get better at the split jerk, to get better at the clean and jerk, we need to remove the jerk every once in a while and put it on its own. The problem with that is when you take a heavy barbell out of the front or out of the rack into the front rack, it feels heavy, it feels really heavy. And sometimes that is very daunting. So we need to make sure that there are no lollipop reps as we like to call them here at Misfit Athletics. Hunter's gonna pick up the bar and he's going to half-ass the shit out of this. It's really important to think about this from the standpoint of if I can't get this done with an empty bar or at 95, 135, how am I gonna put 315 over my head? You need to move with intensity. So even though this is an empty bar, Hunter knows that he can pick it up and show us the right way to do things. He is primed to then do that at 75 pounds, 95 pounds and continue to do it all the way up. Last but not least, you need to earn your percentages when something like this is as high skill as it is. So what we see from athletes is they go from the lollipop reps to the sweet spot, that 65 to 85% range, somewhere in there. They actually start to move a little bit better because there is weight on the bar. Then we get past that and we see the lockouts. You see the athlete get to the bottom of that catch position and have to press the barbell out. We see them not getting under the bar anymore. That leg gets straightened. We see the flying push press where then they make sure their coach knows that they ended up down here. None of those things are going to help you. In the world of Olympic lifting, percentages are everywhere and they're a really useful tool, but only if you are getting the stimulus that we're after. We need to move with intention. If the barbell is not feeling great on any given day, you can forget about percentages altogether, or you can use a training max where you're looking at 90 to 95% of your PR to then use for the percentages. So again, just to recap, we want to incorporate pause work so that you can get feedback in the moment and I as the coach can get feedback when I'm watching, making sure everything's all good. Practice how you play. What does that mean? That means be snappy and have intention in every single rep that you do, empty bar or 405 pounds on the bar. And last but not least, earn those percentages. Percentage work is only going to work if you are moving through those checkpoints that we just talked about. Give him a shot and we'll see you next time.